Hi there, welcome to Shandu.org. Today let's talk about an interesting chart. This is what uh, Livio, one of our readers from Italy, sent to me in email. He wanted to prepare a chart for wall hygrometric physics. Well, I have really no idea what it means, but uh, thankfully Livio sent me a, a sketch of what he really meant by this. And uh, so to speak in plain English, what he really wanted is he wanted to create an XY chart uh, with custom X axis intervals. If you create a regular XY chart, what would happen is you have the X axis and every unit on the X axis will have same uh, same size. So what what Livio wanted to do was he wanted to depict how various layers in a wall. Let's say you're making a building and you have uh, you have a very thick wall that has multiple layers, uh, a layer of uh, cement and maybe there is a bit of brickwork and and some other insulation layers are there. So how each of these layers would impact the temperature gradient when uh, when outside temperature is let's say like today it has been like 40 degrees outside uh, in centigrade. So outside the temperature and inside the house it would probably be around 25, 27 or something like that. So how the temperature from outside changes to inside and he wanted to depict that in an XY plot with custom axis intervals. So let me first show you the chart and then I will explain to you how such a chart can be made. So you can think of this, uh, look at this chart here. Uh, this is pretty much what he wanted to make. He wanted to make a chart that would show that outside temperature of 100% became uh, inside roughly 20%, 21% uh, by declining like this. Now if you make a regular XY chart, what would happen is the width of 0 to 1 would be same as 1 to 2, 2 to 3, 3 to 4, 4 to 5. Whereas in real life, when you're making a wall, the thickness of various layers is different. The outermost layer, which is probably some sort of... Uh, uh, you know temperature resistant paint or something would be very thin like probably a couple of millimeters and then you have a layer of uh, you know plastering done with cement etc so uh, he wanted to depict like this and how to create this chart well it looks uh, quite difficult but uh, believe me it's very very easy to create for this uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this data and uh, that's the data and insert a blank sheet, paste it here. Okay, so we have the data, and now let me just show you what are the steps that we need to take. So this is the data that we uh, usually have. You have, let us say, a wall has five layers, so you have layer one, two, three, four, five, and then how much width each of those layers has: 10, 20, 30 units, 60, and the innermost layer is again 10. And the temperature gradient. This is the percentage uh, reduction in temperature as as uh, heat passes through one layer to another. So the outermost layer would decrease the percentage, for ten percent of temperature, then twenty percent, and the middle layer would decrease it by sixty-five, eight, and ten. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the uh, data for chart. Okay. So x by chart would require x values and y values, right? Um, just to make this simple, I'm going to move this one bit there. The very first X point and Y point would be X is uh, 0 and Y is 100%. That is outside temperature, uh, there is no layer, this 100% temperature would be there. And then the first layer's width would be, uh, this is cumulative width, so sum of uh, uh, that, right, sum of that with C5 as absolute. That means as you drag this down, you would get cumulative width. So you can see this. Okay. So at the innermost layer, the total width that is accumulated is 130. It's the same as formula shown here. And then 100% 100, 100, 100 of temperature outside would become, uh, after the first layer is passed, it would go down by 10%. So it would be just uh, take that and multiply that with 1 minus that. Okay. So then you, we will just drag this down and in case you want you can just apply percentage formatting. So this is XY chart and then select these two uh, and just expanding ribbon and then let's go and insert an XY scatter plot with that uh, layer. Okay. So we get something like this. Uh, now look at this very carefully. Uh, this is not exactly the chart. Uh, this is the exact chart that you know Livio wanted. 
except there are a couple of corrections. For example, x-axis has 0 to 150, whereas uh, we wanted to show the wall layer numbers. That, that's all the only difference is. So the very first part is to do it like this. And then the second part would be to simply mimic the x-axis labels here. So for that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create another series called axis axis and then just put uh, zero here for everything okay zero for everything and uh, copy this whole thing control c click on the chart and paste it so now what would what would happen is uh, it excel will add another series since we are only adding y values which is axis x values would be assumed same as the previous series okay so this is how xy scatter plots work when you copy paste data so you can see dots wherever the a new layer is starting. So that's outmost layer, then one layer number one, two, three, four, and five. So at each layer, the temperature kind of changes, right? So now what we want to do is we want to uh, show the numbers next to, to it, like one, two, three, four, five, okay? So that it will work. So this is axis. Likewise, I'm going to add another column here called as labels. Okay, labels, the first label is zero and then equal to that. This can be really anything. It can be like, uh, you know, layer name, for example, uh, painting, uh, cement coating, brickwork and insulation coating and inner cement coating or inner painting. Any Anything you can put here doesn't matter. Okay, so this next step is uh, just, uh, I'm going to resize this because next step would require something additional. And then right click on this little red line and add data labels. Okay. So data labels would be added. By default, Excel will add the Y values as the data tables. So you would see zeros everywhere. So select the zeros and press Control 1 to format them. Right click and format data labels will also do. So we want to have, uh, it doesn't matter what value is shown because we don't want any of these. And then you will just say show the labels below. Not right, but below. And click OK. So you'll see zeros there and then click on the axis now. Again, press control one to format the axis and then say, we don't want any axis labels. So axis labels, none. Likewise, tick mark also none. We don't want any tick marks either. So no axis labels, no tick marks. Excellent, right? Once this part is done, you should see a, a red line at the bottom along with zeros, almost mimicking the axis. This kind of mimics the axis. The only limitation here is that you are seeing zeros instead of actual labels. Now, how do you get these labels here instead of zeros? How do we get those labels? For that, there are many ways to do it. The easiest way that I usually do is it up to Excel 2010. You can install this XY chart labels add-in. This is uh, from Rob BV. I'll put a link to this add-in in, in the article so you can just uh, grab it. It's a free add-in. And it does wonders. So select that, that line, the red line, and add labels from XY chart labels. And say that the series label should be added to that. And the label range is Dutch. Okay. And the label positioning is below. And when you click OK, you can see the 0, 0, 0, 0, it all change it to those numbers. So XY chart labeler uh, will take care of this for you. In case you don't have the add-in and you want to do this manually, there is a way to, you can select each and every label, you can select the labels, all of them, and then click on any one of the labels once again, and then click here in the formula bar, type equal to, and point it to the label. So this is how manually, one label at a time, you can adjust, right? That's what the add-in does it, it automates that process. If you are running Excel 2013, then you are in luck because this kind of thing can be done in Excel 2013 by just right clicking on the data labels and going to format settings and uh, telling Excel that I want to use labels in a, in a range. So Excel will let you do that. Okay. So once you do that, then the next step is to add some indicators to show that this is where a wall will be. This is where a new layer starts. This is where a new layer starts. For that, right, uh, select the red line again and go to format, uh, layout, layout ribbon, and then we will add standard error bars, okay? This would probably change the chart layout, but nothing to worry. And then select the x-axis label, uh, horizontal error bars, and uh, delete them. 
Okay. Now the vertical error bars are still there, but we can't see them because they're very small. So uh, we'll go to the uh, layout ribbon, and from here, chart area in the selection, we will drop drop this down. Let me just uh, and then select Y error bars. So when you select, they will be selected because they're so tiny you can't see them. And then press Control One to format them. This will open up the format error bar box where we will just say that there should not be any cap and the error bar is on the plus side with a fixed value of 1. 1 means 100% so you will see a line all the way from bottom going up to that. So that kind of shows that. And click OK. Okay, now I'm going to just uh, resize this workbook. And, uh, and then finally we'll do a bit of cleanup which is just get rid of those things. Uh, arrange the plot area and then select that axis, press Control 1 and fix it to 0 to 1 uh, with 20% uh, markers and uh, select the lines and format them as something like that. Wall layers can be slightly stronger because that's what important there. So again select the error bars and uh, uh, and you can, I'm not able to select them but yeah now we can. So select the error bars and format them in a different color and uh, finally select the axis and go to control 1 and then say marker options none. We don't want any marker, we don't want any line. Okay, so that should do that. Right, at this stage you'll pretty much have something like this. In case you're feeling curious, you can even format that line to, for example, something like that. and fix the marker options also you can just say use a use a circle type of marker with uh, or with a white color fill that will make it look slightly elegant like that so this is how easy it is to set it up uh, like this with different x axis uh, x axis label intervals well technically we have not really changed any intervals in x axis all we did is we faked this effect by getting rid of the axis altogether and then uh, adding our own dummy series and positioning labels and everything. So the final chart can look something like this if you do a bit more formatting and cleaning up. Okay, So that's how it is. Again, uh, go ahead and download the example workbook. It has, it has the chart and the data entry sheet along with the detailed steps uh, of the process. So you can clearly see what, what, what happens at each stage each stage and how, how the chart formatting gets done. Okay, so go ahead and try this and in case you are, you are somebody who analyzes this kind of data, wall hygrometrics or you know any, anywhere else where uh, you need to have different slopes of a line depending on the, on the width of something, especially useful when you are trying to model in engineering or technology areas where this kind of data is quite often seen. So if you have something like this, go ahead and try it. Again, it's not, not going to take you quite some time. I think we spent less than 10 minutes doing it. So it's not too much work and it clearly looks very impressive, right? <clears throat> so go ahead and try that. And thank you once again for watching this video and learning something. I hope you have enjoyed it. In case you have some feedback, suggestions or something, go ahead and uh, visit chendu.org slash WP and uh, share your comments. You can also download this workbook there. So go ahead and do that. And thanks to Livio for sending me an email and asking this question, which is quite interesting. And it shows how easy it is to do something like this with Excel. So with that, I'll conclude. Thanks again for watching. You have a fantastic day. Bye-bye.